Scientific research is intended to be publicly available and transparent, valuing transparency and openness. Transparency is essential to be honest and forthright. We aim for open and honest, and by being transparent in our work, we uphold our dedication to scientific excellence. Transparency. Transparent. Be transparent. Transparently. In an open and transparent manner. NASA is, I think, being a lying, disingenuous, disreputable organization in the way it's conducting itself with the public. And frankly, I'm not an American, but if I was paying the bills for a space agency like NASA, I'd be asking for my money back. 30 seconds. When I was a boy, I remember the excitement I felt waiting for the next launch from Cape Canaveral. I wanted nothing more than a NASA bomber jacket to accompany my many toy rockets. So it hurts me to say, but it seems like NASA may have become the latest conspirator in a long list of government-appointed agencies tasked with addressing the UAP problem and dismissing it. Unfortunately, they know more. Much, much more. With official documents found in the National Archives, we are going to take a deep dive into the strange secrecy that surrounds UAP sightings. Believe it or not, we actually have proof that NASA have not only been directly involved in UAP events, but have gone to great lengths to keep evidence and information from the public. What you're about to see is shocking and proves that this has been going on for a very, very long time. The B-52 carrier takes the X-15 out for its maiden powered flight. In 1962, at the dawn of manned spaceflight, NASA conducted test flights with the rocket-powered X-15 aircraft. U.S. Air Force pilots experienced approximately three to four minutes of zero gravity at altitudes over 50 miles above the Earth. One of these pilots was Joseph Walker. Joe Walker, NASA's chief test pilot. Many eyes are on the dark-shaped plane this morning, but among the most important observers are the engineers at NASA. During a test flight on April 30th, Walker was sent into space with the objective, he claims, of filming unidentified objects that had been reported by other test pilots at high altitude. During the flight, Walker captured five to six disc-shaped or cylindrical objects flying around his aircraft. When the flight concluded, the press learned of the story, and on May 11th, internal teletype messages were recorded. These correspondences took place between NASA officials and the Air Force, where they discussed the UFO sightings and the film taken by Joseph Walker. Is Major Marks there, please? Major Marks will not be in the office until 4.30 our time. So would you please pass the message on and I will deliver to his office. Okay, I'm sure you are aware of a story out of Seattle today quoting Joe Walker as saying that on his recent altitude test flight, a rear-facing camera took photos of what looked like flying saucer objects. Naturally, all the TV and reels are screaming for it. This is NASA footage, not Air Force. We need a DOD release number for this footage. This is Hart. Regarding the Joe Walker footage, NASA locally disapproves release of the footage. They feel Walker over-dramatized the footage. Okay, NASA here in Santa Monica has already notified TV outlets they will make the footage available through our facilities. I am going to go back to NASA here and tell them to give the press this information so they can be the ones to turn the press down, rather than us. We are simply their releasing agent and will do whatever they say. Then, on the next page... Hart here again on the NASA footage. We have coordinated with Stan Miller in Santa Monica and the Washington office as well. Perhaps you should call Stan and let him know that all is well. Also, for my sake, try to get him to play the stuff down with a capital D. This is Major Irons. Is it too late to control the degree of coverage from here? I understand CBS plans to go with it nationally tomorrow and ABC plans to go West Coast regionally. We are not thinking of worrying about the pictures getting released, just that he will play the angle of the fact that their scientists believe the stuff to be material from the X-15 auxiliary engine. That will take it out of the saucer field pretty much and might not give so much possible trouble. This message again from Hart shows that copies of the film were sent to New York, the color version to the Project Blue Book team at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, and the original to Lookout Mountain. And check out this message. Will you please make a color print of the footage from the Joe Walker flight in the X-15 using only those portions of the film 
that show those unusual blobs and send it to Lieutenant Colonel Robert Friend, Foreign Technology Division Parent Air Force Systems Command, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Guess what? Wright-Patterson is the main U.S. government facility where technology is reverse engineered. So, we have to ask ourselves, why would NASA send footage of what they say is just debris from the auxiliary engine to a reverse engineering facility and to the head of Project Blue Book, Robert Friend? By the way, once Friend retired, he alluded to the fact that the government knows a lot more about UAP than they admit. As the program grew and additional sightings uh, were investigated, they suddenly decided, well, there is a possibility that uh, these things are from uh, extraterrestrial origins. Which would suggest what? That they knew what it was? Or didn't know what it was. Also the other way, that they did know what it was. Now, recall the man who was asked to downplay the situation with a capital D? That was Stan Miller from NASA's Santa Monica office. Miller served as the director of NASA's Specialized Center of Research for Studies in Exobiology. As stated on NASA's own website, the exobiology program's purpose is to understand the origin, evolution, distribution, and future of life in the universe, as well as its implications for life elsewhere. Joseph Walker wasn't the only X-15 pilot to have a sighting. And the Air Force Project pilot, Major Bob White. On July 17th, just months later, Major Robert White broke the record for the highest altitude ever reached in an aircraft. Records reveal communications between Major White and ground control, during which he reported seeing objects in space he could not identify. In a Life magazine interview a month later, White confirmed the UFO sighting and expressed that he still does not know what he saw. So where is the footage? Thus far, we have confirmation of the footage's authenticity. We also have evidence that NASA halted the release of the film to the press and engaged in discussions regarding the narrative they would present if the footage were to become public. Additionally, we know that copies of the film were dispatched to three different Air Force bases, one of which was directly related to Project Blue Book. However, the most astounding fact remains that this film has never been made public. NASA prides itself on making its data and images available to the public. Everything we use at NASA is open and anyone can look at these records. It's worth noting that while the Air Force has faced criticism in the past, this one is all on NASA. And here's why. Many researchers and reporters made repeated requests for the film and were denied. NASA is a civilian organization and the X-15 flights were entirely unclassified. They were even broadcast live for takeoff and landing. Therefore, it doesn't make sense to deny the release of footage from the flight cameras, especially when so many people were requesting it, and the pilots believe they witnessed UFOs in space. NASA has never provided an official explanation, and to this day, no films from the Joe Walker or Robert White flights have been released. These documents reveal a response from the Air Force regarding the release and confirm that NASA was, and probably still is, the entity in control of the films. Dear Mr. Deal, thank you for your letter concerning the film of the unknown objects seen by Major White on his X-15 flight. The film to which you refer is the property of NASA, located here at Edwards Air Force Base. We suggest you write the below address for further information on the film. After Mr. Deal made a request to the provided address, he received a response from NASA's Ralph Jackson, who simply informed him that the footage is only available to groups on a need-to-know basis. Over the years, there were multiple requests made to NASA for the film, and the excuses varied. In one instance, they claimed they couldn't release the film because a soundtrack had not been created for it yet, almost as if they were trying to antagonize researchers. In 1981, after almost 20 years of mounting requests, NASA did release this still image from Robert White's rear-facing camera, but not the film itself. Then, in 1989, NASA denied the existence of the films altogether. This FOIA response from Patricia Reap states that NASA headquarters was unable to locate any photographs taken of UFOs by either Joseph Walker or Major Robert White. 
I find it quite alarming that we just accept this from a supposed scientific institution that is funded with taxpayer money. We know that this film was sent to multiple people and places. We know that Project Blue Book received copies. And for those of you who didn't know, Project Blue Book was an Air Force-funded study of UFOs that ran from 1952 to 1969. The files were supposedly declassified and released to the public in full. Yet, no film from the X-15 flights was included in those files. Perhaps the most alarming aspect is that NASA is 100% hiding evidence of UAP. Now that we know when NASA's secrecy began, we can move forward. It may surprise you to learn that there have been numerous astronaut sightings, including some of the most well-known figures in space exploration history. Buzz Aldrin was the second man to walk on the moon. In a 2005 documentary, he stated that the crew of the Apollo 11 mission witnessed a UFO. Aldrin later retracted his statements, explaining that what he said was taken out of context. However, some NASA employees have made claims that this event did, in fact, happen. There was something out there that um, was close enough to be observed, and uh, what could it be? Now, obviously, the three of us were not going to blurt out, hey, Houston, we got something moving alongside of us, and uh, we don't know what it is. You know, can you tell us what it is? We weren't about to do that, because uh, we know that uh, the, those transmissions would be heard by all sorts of people, and uh, uh, who knows what somebody would have demanded that we uh, turn back because of aliens or whatever the reason is. So we, we didn't do that. So we decided uh, that after a while of watching it, uh, we it was time to go to sleep and not to talk about it anymore until we came back in, in debriefing. There were a lot of people within the program who went off later and became convinced that UFOs existed. And that led to some concern on NASA's part where they got the agreement of the crew never to publicly talk about these things for fear of ridicule. As I mentioned earlier, the interview with Buzz Aldrin was conducted in 2005 as part of the documentary film Apollo 11, The Untold Story. This film was a significant production, featuring at least six other NASA employees directly involved in the Apollo 11 landing. Strangely, the film is currently unavailable for purchase on any streaming platforms. You can find details on the IMDb page, but if you wish to watch it, the only option seems to be through forums. The interview is notably absent from YouTube, and there is compelling evidence that the video has been removed on numerous occasions. In a 2021 Reuters article, it is claimed that the video of this interview was posted on YouTube in 2007, prompting a response from senior NASA scientist David Morrison. He stated, I just talked to Buzz Aldrin on the phone, and he notes that the quotations were taken out of context and did not convey the intended meaning. There were also efforts made by mainstream media to walk back Aldrin's statements. In my opinion, Stating that it was taken out of context doesn't really make sense in these circumstances. If Buzz Aldrin were to deny the accuracy of the reported quotes, he would essentially have to assert that he either lied about the whole thing or that the events in question did indeed occur. Astronaut Gordon Cooper was the last man to fly on the Mercury missions in 1963 and the last man to venture into space alone. In an interview with J.L. Ferrando, Major Cooper said, For many years I have lived with a secret, in a secrecy imposed on all specialists in astronautics. I can now reveal that every day in the U.S. our radar instruments capture objects of form and composition unknown to us. And there are thousands of witness reports and a quantity of documents to prove this, but nobody wants to make them public. I, as I understand it, in 1951 or 1950, you had a couple days of ob observing something usual flying over Europe? Yes. We had some, some kind of craft flying overhead at pretty good altitude and flying the same kind of formation we fly in our fighter. Were they planes? I mean, what? Well, it turns out they didn't have wings. They were saucer shaped. And we never could get as high or as fast as they were, so I didn't really positively identify them, but they were metallic looking and saucer and shape, and they can do a few maneuvers that we couldn't do in an airplane. 
what what maneuvers are that. Like just horizontally displace themselves rapidly. Be flying along and just move over rapidly. And what um how fast were they moving? Well faster than we could in F eighty six and so they were they were capable of accelerating very readily out well past Mach one anyway. Do I think the government knows more about this so than we do? Yes, I think they know a great deal more than we do. Did you know where that footage went of the flying saucer that landed on the tarmac? Went, went to Washington, that's all that I know. Did you ever keep in touch with anybody about it or discuss it? How would I keep in touch with anybody about it? There's no way within the military or within the government of keeping track of something that is classified unless you're directly involved in it, and I was not. Astronaut Edgar Mitchell was the sixth man to set foot on the moon during the Apollo 14 mission and spent nine hours on the lunar surface. Mitchell was vocal about the UFO subject and faced retaliation from NASA. But let's put all that aside for a moment because we're here to talk about disclosure. And what I am suggesting is it is now time to put away this embargo of truth about the alien presence. And I call upon our government to open up. This world legal battle is shaping up tonight between a former moonwalker and NASA. The space agency is suing Apollo 14 astronaut Edgar Mitchell over possession of a camera he used on the surface of the moon and reportedly tried to sell. We had agreement with the uh, uh, NASA management that small items that didn't exceed our weight limitation we could bring back. Sh shame for such a it, high it profile. Is. Uh, it sure you is. cringe to watch that with NASA and After one of their celebrated astronauts. The service but that he gave all of us. The fight goes on. I'm just following up on uh, on the, the question about if NASA astronauts ever signed an NDA or um, anything of that, um, anything like that. Um, in my experience of being in the astronaut office for 20 years, there was never any formal or informal discussions at all about UAPs or UFOs or anyone reporting anything. That concludes part one of this series. I hope you've gained insights into NASA's history and its direct connection with the Department of Defense. The comments we just heard from Scott Kelly include some of the claims from the hearing that are entirely false. In part two, we will delve deep into such claims and explore the backgrounds of certain panel members and why they would be selected for this study. Why did, they, why did the aliens stop visiting the Earth as soon as everyone got the camera in their pocket, right? <laughs> I always wanted to open the window shutters in the morning and just see some, like, spaceship hovering next to us. <laughs> Never happened. Why did they stop coming as soon as we got, all got the cameras in our pockets? <laughs> so that was only because I'm a very good actor. I think I should be nominated for an Academy Award. Do you believe in UFOs? No. Why not? Because I don't believe in them. Believe it or not, one committee member worked for an aerospace company. That company received a $22 million payment to conduct a classified investigation into UAP on behalf of the Air Force in 2008. We will be looking at emails and documents showing regular discussions about UAPs within this committee, and to be honest, we haven't even scratched the surface. Despite their claims of non-classified activities, we will show that some members have in fact been involved in classified briefings about UAP. I would also like to mention that I personally feel that most of the scientists at NASA are doing great work and likely have no idea that the organization is involved in hiding information. Personally, I don't even know if these objects represent non-human intelligence or not. I just know that they continue to show up all around the world and for some reason, government agencies go to great lengths to hide, discredit, and disinform the populace. Check the description for links to the National Archives so you can view the NASA teletype messages for yourself. Subscribe and smash that bell. Part 2 will blow your mind.